Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disso. I'm sure that many of you are aware that with the chip shortage, many laptop manufacturers are shipping slower RAM with their laptops because that RAM is more readily available. And in fact, many people are actually putting in third party RAM to speed things up a little bit. Now, Asus claims that one should only see a 5% boost on average, but in reality, this depends on how much work is put on the GPU. A higher resolution and higher quality settings should see less of an impact unless we are dealing with something like the RTX 3080 to 165 watt part. Now, Jared's Tech did test the 140 watt 3070 in the Legion 5 Pro. So actually, I wanted to see how uh, faster RAM got on with the 130 watt RTX 3060 in the Legion 7. The stock RAM was a 16 gigabyte kit, single rank by 16, which means it has two memory modules compared to the faster single rank by 8 or 1R X8 RAM, which has four memory modules. And often it is faster for RAM to search for data between the modules. The faster RAM I tested is dual rank by 8 and has four more modules on the reverse side of the DIMM. Now this kit costs $293 on Amazon. And I will leave a link in the description below, but at the moment they are out of stock. You may be best finding some uh, single rank by eight DIMMs, but either way, we will see if it is worth the extra money. I wanted to test both the CPU performance and gaming, both at 1080p and a native resolution of 2560 by 1600. So first off, let's take a look at the CPU tests. In total, I tested 11 different programs and it was quite a mixed bag, really. Generally, rendering programs like Blender, V-Ray, Corona 1.3 and Cinebench didn't see much advantage having the faster RAM. Now, utilities that tested a range of use cases like Geekbench and Passmark saw a nice gain. And also, CPU tests on Firestrike and TimeSpy also benefited. Now, if you do a lot of uh, zip files, you know, then that uh, 7 zip saw a 13% gain, so that was nice. So, on average, we saw a 7% improvement. Not a huge amount, but much depends on what your workload is. So, let's take a look at gaming at the Legion 7's native resolution of 2560 by 1600. Pretty much using ultra settings. At the top, I showed a stock RAM in the yellow and red bars with a faster RAM below it using the blue and green bars. Now I also tested hybrid mode and dedicated GPU mode. Although there isn't a drastic improvement, it did allow the hybrid setup with faster RAM to close the gap somewhat on the setup using stock RAM and a dedicated GPU mode. A Far Cry New Dawn was tested using the inbuilt benchmark. This game is very CPU dependent, so we see some nice gains here. Dedicated GPU mode sees a 5% improvement, but hybrid mode sees a nice 17% gain. So much so, it basically ties the dedicated GPU mode using the stock RAM. Horizon Zero Dawn is much like Cyberpunk. The main takeaway is that using the faster RAM in hybrid mode closes the gap with the dedicated GPU mode with stock RAM from 18% to 9%. With Metro Exodus, the faster RAM benefited hybrid mode the most once again. So I am inclined to recommend switch RAM if you find yourself that you're not switching to dedicated GPU mode very often. Rainbow Six Siege, even at this resolution and max settings, sees some impressive frame rates. Dedicated GPU mode didn't see much improvement, but hybrid saw a 10% gain. Also, the minimum frame rates saw a nice boost too. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider didn't see much difference with the faster RAM. But, as you will see shortly, if you lower that resolution, the picture changes completely. Watch Dogs Legion was very much like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There is not a lot of difference here. And we see much the same in 3D marks, Fire Strike and Time Spy. So let's take a look at the averages. I showed the average frame rates for each of the games tested using dedicated GPU mode, and also the percentage improvement using the faster RAM. All in all, not a huge improvement, only 4%. Whilst hybrid mode sees an 8% gain, which is huge if you don't want to keep changing modes to save battery life. Now, let's see the effect of using the same quality settings, but at a lower 1080p resolution, which to be fair, most of you guys will probably be using. This time, dedicated GPU mode jumps from a 4% gain to a 10% improvement. We actually see a massive swing in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 
and also the 1% lows or minimum frame rates sees a nice boost too. Now I didn't test hybrid mode here, but it is safe to say that we will probably see another 10% improvement. So when ASUS says that you'll only see a 5% gain, I suspect they must be looking at a 1440p dedicated GPU setup. Now I would expect that if you have a lower powered 3060 or a lower tier card, then the gains will be less. And if you have a higher end GPU or use lower quality settings, you'll see slightly higher results. So that begs the question, is it worth upgrading the RAM? Now a 16 gigabyte DDR4, 3200 megahertz, single rank by eight costs about $80. So I think if you game at 1080p and have a laptop that uses Optimus, I think it's definitely worth it. Also, if your workload requires that you up it to 32 gigabytes, then you're likely gonna get faster 16 gigabyte DIMMs anyway. Now I just bought the Legion 7 with the ARTX 3070 annual game at 2560 by 1600 probably using the dedicated GPU mode. So I'll probably save my money and put that towards a second SSD. Now I hope that you found my video useful. And if you did, smash that like button and uh, I'll see you in my next video, which will be the RTX 3070 version of the Nitro 5. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Bye now. <laughs>